we're going to walk through the try it yourselves and I'm going to do it on this video for you. For try it yourself one on page 280, it uses the data in the box at the left. So I put it up here if you need to pause the video so that you have it in front of you. Now what it asks for us in Try It Yourself 1, now it's going to continue through Try It Yourself 2 using the same data, but it's asking us to find the point estimate for the population mean. Now remember that the point estimate is just simply the sample mean is what they're asking us to do. So we're looking for it for the population mean, so we're going to find our mean. Now if you have your graphing calculators, you can use your graphing calculator. But I also wanted to show you that you can do this in a spreadsheet as well. So if you pull up a Google Sheets, or you can even use Excel, and you put all of this data in a list, you can see how I did this. So I put all 30 pieces of data in a list already. And you could take a couple minutes and do try this. So where I'm going to go, I'm just going to go to some other random box in the spreadsheet and I'm going to click on it. Now, if you're doing this in your graphing calculator, now you're going to go into one variable statistics and look for the sample mean. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a f equation or a function. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to scroll till I see average. At the very top, I can see average. So I'm going to click on average. Now what do I want it to average together? I want it to average the whole column. So I'm just going to click on A and hit enter and it's going to show me the um, sample mean or in this case it's showing me the point estimate. So we can round that to 14.77 and I'm going to use that as my sample mean for which is my point estimate for the population mean. So I'm going to hold on to that because I'm going to need that. Now if we move on to try it yourself number two, and if this is at the bottom of page 282, it's going to ask us to use that data and find a 95% confidence level of, to find them, use a 95% confidence level to find the margin of error. So what we're looking for is E. Now E is one of those formulas that I gave you yesterday in class. So E is equal to the critical value of Z times our um, population standard deviation. Now you can remember that it said if you do not have the population standard deviation, then we can replace that with our sample standard deviation and we'll have to divide that by the square root of 30, which is our sample size. All right, so yesterday we did the, the confidence level at 95% using those charts. And if I kind of hopscotch back to that, the 95% critical value is 1.96. So we're going to use E is equal to 1.96. Now, I need that sample standard deviation. So I'm going to go back to that spreadsheet. Now, you can do this in your calculators, or you can go back to this spreadsheet. So I'm going to slide it over so you can see this just a little bit better. I have another random box picked here. And in here, I can also insert another function. Now this time, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to find, but we're going to go down here to statistical. Let me move this over just a little bit more so you can see it. So I'm going to go down to function. I'm going to do statistical. If you scroll down, you can see various standard deviations. It has standard deviation, standard deviation of an entire population, standard deviation of a sample. That's what I'm going to use, standard deviation of a sample. Again, I'm going to utilize column A, so I'm just going to click on column A and hit enter. So that's giving me my sample standard deviation at 16.53, I believe is what we have there, 16.536. So let me minimize this and we're going to use for our sample standard deviation 16.536. So we'll plug that in here. 
and divide that by the square root of 30. Now when I calculate that out, that finds me a margin of error of 5.917. Now what does that mean? It says it really means that we are 95% confident that the maximum error of estimate is about 5.917 sentences per magazine advertisement. So these were always the number of sentences in a magazine ad. So let me write that out for you. You are 95% confident that the maximum error, that's what we just found, the E, of the estimate, of our point estimate, is about 5.917 sentences per magazine ad. Okay, and that's how you find the error. Now, what we need to do from here is turn that into a confidence interval. So what happens here is we put our population mean in the middle, because that's what we're looking for, and we take our sample means and we add and subtract our error to that. So the confidence interval shows us the probability that the confidence interval contains the population mean is given by C. So in this case, in the problem that we're working on now, our confidence level is 95%. So we would be 95% confident that our mean would fall within this certain region. So now let's calculate that. So in try it yourself number three, it's going to ask us to calculate this as an interval. So just to recall what we have already found is that we found that our point estimate was 14.77. We've also calculated that our error was 5.917. So now we're going to have to take our point estimate and add and subtract that 5.917. So that's going to give us, when we do that, a interval from about 8.853 and 20.687. So without knowing what the population mean is, just simply basing our information on the sample that we used, we're going to say that we are 95% confident that our population mean, that the mean number of sentences per magazine ad is between, and that's going to fall between the, these two values, 8.853 and 20.687. And that's how you find your confidence interval for a large sample. So we base that 1.95, um, or 1.96 was based off of the 95% confidence interval. If we would change that confidence interval to a 99%, then we would use a higher z-score, or if we would change that to a 90%, we would use the smaller z-score. So that gives us the confidence to say that at a 95% confidence, our mean is going to fall somewhere in that mean, in between those two values. If we raise that confidence, it's going to make our interval wider. If we lower that confidence, it makes our interval smaller. Now the last thing we need to talk about today is, well, how can we use or how can we calculate to figure out what our sample size should be if we want to stay within a certain error? So what we did was we rearranged that formula to find n. And when we rearrange it, we get n is equal to our confidence level of z times our standard deviation divided by what our error or what we would like our error to be, and we square that. 
All right, so let's look at an example of how to use um, our information to calculate what our n should be. So if you look at try it yourself number six with me, and on try it yourself number six, this is at the bottom of page 286, and this is going to utilize the information from example six. So I'm gonna still example six standard deviation. It says how many magazine ads must be included in a sample if you wanna be 95% confident, so I'm just kind of listing what I need here, that the sample mean is within two sentences of the population. So I want my error to be within two sentences and up in example six, it's telling us that our standard deviation, we're gonna approximate that to be about five. So now we can calculate what size sample to use to make sure that this will work. So with a 95% confidence rate, that means my Z sub C is that 1.96. Of course, if it was 99, it would change, or 90, it would change. We're going to take 1.96 times our error and divide it, times our, I'm sorry, times the standard deviation and then divide it by the error, and we're going to square that. And that's going to say that 9, it's going to give us approximately 24.01. Now, we don't want to round that to 24 because that wouldn't be enough. So we're going to say that we would need at least... 25 magazine ads in my sample to ensure that I would have an error that ranges within two of the actual mean. Okay, so we calculated, just to recap what we've done, we have calculated our point estimate by just finding the mean then we found our error by taking our confidence level times our standard deviation divided by the square root of 30. And then we transferred that into a confidence interval by adding and subtracting our error to our sample mean. Then we also calculated what n should be by knowing our standard deviation, our level of confidence, and our error. All right, I'm gonna give you a few problems for you to try. I'll put those on Google Classroom for you.